Public housing, what effect does it have on your property's resale value? Are public housing areas really no-go zones for investors? A lot of real estate experts will tell you it's a bad thing, but at Microburbs, we're all about doing the primary research and really quantifying the effects. How much public housing is too much and over what distance? Having one public housing commission house on the other side of the suburb will have no effect, but being the only private house on a housing street may really push it down. In this analysis, I will look at every property bought within a year of one census and then sold five years later before the next census. So we're looking at actual realized returns for individual investors based on exactly how much public housing there is at various distances, rather than just the median prices that you'll find in other analyses. This analysis spans 13 years from 2011 to 2024 and includes every town and city across the country. So it encompasses the full spectrum of Australian markets. So that's 57,000 data points, one for every property that was bought and sold. This is looking at actual real investor experiences with public housing down to the microburb level, not the usual suburb level median prices you see bandied about in the real estate game. So this gives us a degree of precision and certainty that we otherwise wouldn't get. So what effect does it have? Let's dive in. In short, enough to be an important indicator. If you're looking to buy a house and public housing is less than 3% of the pocket or microburb on average, you get a return of 10.9% in the value of the property per year for this 57,000 properties. But where there's over 3% public housing, that falls to 9%. Zooming out, you can get an extra 0.7% capital growth if neighboring pockets also have no public housing. And then there's another 0.4% capital growth to be enjoyed if there's no public housing at all within a square kilometre. Okay, but what about if a pocket has no public housing but the surrounding pockets do? It's still bad news, 2% less growth. What happens though if the amount of public housing changes during these five-year gaps between censuses? This data shows you shouldn't be counting on public housing being removed because the capital growth is still less. Perhaps this is because of the increase in supply for regular buyers, or perhaps there's some other transformation going on in the area. But if public housing is on the increase, expect to lose 1% capital growth every year. So there you have it. In summary, ideally you want no public housing within one kilometer. That's 2.9% more annual growth to be enjoyed than when there's over 10%. The second best is to have no public housing within 100 meters, where you get 2.7% more growth, and the third best is to have no public housing in your property's microburb, so that's 2% more growth. So it's an indicator that makes a difference, but shouldn't be thought of as a hard and fast rule. There are still great gains to be made near public housing. If the property is in a public housing area, but still has a lot of things going for it, you can still buy it. At microburbs, we aim to provide all the capital growth indicators you need to get the full picture.